In this video, we introduce the idea of the quadratic formula for solving quadratic equations. We'll also look at different solution behaviours that quadratics can have. So in another video, we covered one way of solving quadratic equations, which was to use uh, factorising and the null factor law. Here we're looking at a second method for solving quadratic equations, and that is to employ the quadratic formula. Now this formula is useful because it solves quadratics which don't factorise neatly in terms of whole numbers, uh, which gives it some advantage over the, the factorisation method. The other thing is that it also allows us to determine uh, beforehand how many solutions our quadratic will have. So given the general form of our quadratic is usually written like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, the quadratic formula uh, simply states that the solutions, if there are any, to that quadratic equation are given by this formula. x equal to negative of the b. This symbol here means plus or minus. I'll explain that again in a minute. The square root of the b squared minus the 4 times the a times the c, all divided by 2a. Now, the thing that I do want to point out is that plus minus thing. That actually means that we've got one x value, which is negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and another, which is minus b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All we've done here in the red box is use a little shorthand notation, the plus minus symbol, to write these two different values, which look very, very similar, in one sort of one format. It's essentially a shorthand because the only difference between the two is the plus and the minus right there. Okay, let's try it out. Here's three examples. We're going to use the quadratic formula to solve each of these quadratics. Uh, this should be fairly doable, so maybe give yourself a couple of minutes, go back, write down the formula, and try to apply it to each of these three uh, quadratic equations. Okay, in the first example, 4x squared minus 5x equal to minus 1, the first thing I notice is that it's not actually in the correct form. I need to get that minus 1 back to the left. So I write 4x squared minus 5x and then add 1 to both sides to give me the correct format. Now what this tells me is that a is equal to 4, uh, b is equal to minus 5, it's important to keep that sign, and c is equal to 1. I've just pulled those off from the three terms in the quadratic. The quadratic formula then tells me that x is equal to, let's remember it, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All of that is over 2a. So we have minus b, which here is going to be positive 5, plus or minus the square root of minus 5 squared, which is 25. Take away 4 times a will make 16, times c will remain as 16. And all of that must be divided by 2 times a. 2 times 4 here is going to be 8. Okay, so let's see what we can do. We can leave the 5 and write the plus or minus. Inside there we're going to have 9. 25 minus 16 is 9. And the square root of 9 is, of course, 3. And that's all divided by 8. So what that means is we've got 5 plus 3, which is 8, divided by 8, and 5 minus 3, which is 2, divided by 8. Okay, so that's what the plus minus symbol effectively means. Now what that's going to tell us though is that the solutions of the equation, the quadratic equation, are, well 8 over 8, we can reduce that to 1, and 2 over 8 reduces to 1 over 4, 1 quarter. So the solutions are x equal to 1, and x equal to 1 quarter, according to the quadratic formula. Now you can see that x there is a, a quarter, it's not a whole number, so this would have been a difficult one to work with, with the factorization method. Don't forget, uh, the last thing you should always be doing is checking those, so maybe take those back now and sub them into the equation. I'll do x equals 1 quickly, 4 by 1, take away 5 by 1 is minus 1, and the right hand side is minus 1, so that one checks out. Okay, our second example is 25x squared plus 80x plus 64 equal to 0. I might just quickly write down, that's already in the right form, so I can pull out a is 25, b is 80, and c is 64. 
uh, those are all pretty big numbers, so this might need a, a calculator to figure out the values. Uh, maybe not. Let's see how we go. Quadratic formula says that x is going to be negative b, or minus 80, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, that's 6400, I think. Use your calculator if you like. Minus 4 times a, that's going to be 100, times c. 6400, okay, that's that's looking cool. I seem to have been able to do that. And that looks nice because it's gonna to subtract to zero, but let's not forget what we're doing. Two times A, two times 25 is 50. Okay, next step, uh, let's leave the minus 80. We've then got plus or minus the square root of, that is zero, the square root of zero is zero, all over 50. And that means we've got minus 80, plus 0 over 50, and minus 80 minus 0 over 50. Uh, those are both exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to scribble that out. Both the same thing, they're both just minus 80 over 50, uh, which we can simplify down a little bit further, minus 8 over 5 or minus 1.6. Okay, again, uh, a little bit tricky to try to factor that one, so I wouldn't try it. I'd go with the quadratic equation. And we've come down, interestingly here, we've only got one value. Remember in the previous example we had two, x equals one and x equals a quarter. Here we've only ended up with one value, so there's only one x value that solves that equation up there. You might want to check that. Okay, but rest assured that that is a possible solution behavior for quadratics. We can get two solutions, one solution, or even none. In part C, we've got 2x squared plus 3x plus 3 equal to 0. Okay, so 2x squared plus 3x plus 3 is 0. A here is 2, B is 3, and C is also 3. So our quadratic formula says that x is minus B or minus 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that'll be 9, minus 4 by 2 is 8, by 3 is 24, all divided by 2 times a, or 4. Now in this case, we can see we've got minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 24 is minus 15. Okay, now... So far, all we've dealt with is the square roots of positives and zeros, and I've been saying we don't worry about square roots of negatives. They lead to complex or imaginary numbers. And that's exactly the case here. We can't evaluate that in the real number world. So what we're going to have to do here is say that uh, we can't evaluate that, so there are no real x values. There are no real numbers, x, that will satisfy this equation. And that's our answer. There's no solutions that are real numbers. So we can just sum, summarize that now. There are no real solutions to this equation. Now that's not to say there are no equation, uh, sorry, no solutions at all. There are solutions, they just happen to be complex numbers. And that is them there in an unsimplified form. But for our purposes, we'll say there are no real solutions. Okay, so we've now seen that unlike linear equations, which always had one solution, uh, the, the examples that we've seen, we've seen a few different behaviours. We've had two solutions, a single solution, and even no solution, at least in terms of the real numbers. So the nature of the solution for our quadratic equations actually de depends quite heavily, well, completely, on the value of this thing called the discriminant, the value that sits inside the square root. We find if we have the square root of a negative, we get no real solutions. So if this quantity is negative, there's no real solutions. If it's equal to zero, though, we saw in the second example that we only get one solution, not two solutions that are identically valued. On the other hand, if b squared minus 4ac is a regular or positive real number, then we get two solutions uh, to our quadratic equation. Okay, so in this video, we introduced the quadratic formula and it's a second method that we can use to solve quadratic equations. We found that quadratics, depending on their coefficients and therefore depending on their discriminant, can have zero, one, or two solutions.